Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The lucky householders whose homes are heated with coal are enjoying healthful warmth in every room of their homes. There is enough anthracite for all. So even though the winter winds blow, there is no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir, when you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you're the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite, the home heating fuel that never fails. And remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Bones of the Dragon. Chinatown is beginning its New Year celebration, and today the dragon parades through Mott, Pell, and Doyo streets to the sound of drums and cymbals while admirers offer gifts of money. Lamont Cranston's friend, Johnny Lee, has accompanied the dragon to collect these gifts, and now this evening carries a money box that holds a fortune. Lamont and Margot Lane watch his approach from the side. Well, there's Johnny Lee now, Margot. Hello, Johnny. Uh, hello, Lamont. Here I will. Right. How do you like the dragon, Margot? He's quite a fellow, but how do they work it? They have two dancers inside. They change about with other dancers. The dragon's been parading all day. Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello. Not finished, are you? Uh, just finished, Lamont. Uh, the parade goes on to the corner, then breaks up. Uh, good evening, Miss Lane. Hello, Johnny. That box looks heavy. You must have a lot of money in I it. I have, but quite a few thousand. Oh, that much? Oh, sure. We call it a gift for the dragon, but it is our community chest. Excuse me, please. I want to put this money away. Then I'll be right back. You're far to go. If you do, we can go with you. Oh, no, no. That is all right. Just across the street. Back in a minute. All right, Johnny. Then what are we going to do, Lamont? Then we're going to his uncle's for a real Chinese holiday banquet. His uncle? This is just down the street a bit. His uncle's name is Chung. Very charming old Chinese gentleman. Oh? How long have you known Johnny Lee? Oh, several years now. He helped me on a case once when I was... Lamont! Going... What? Look across the street. Johnny opened the door to those offices and then jumped back as if he were frightened. Wait. Someone's come out. That's funny. Who is that? Sabu Hao Doi. wonder what he's got to do with Lee. What on earth is Sabu Hao Doi? A hatchet man, one of the Tong's hired killers. He looks like a killer. Right, Margot. Lee does look frightened. Come on, let's cross over. He's got a lot of money there. This may mean trouble. Now they've gone in. Wait a second. Didn't you hear something? Hear what? I'm not sure, but it may have been a scream right after they closed that door. I thought... Margo, that was a scream. Come on, hurry. Okay, careful now. This is the door. Close that door quickly. Lamont, Johnny's been stabbed. No. No, Lamont, it isn't Johnny. No, it's the hatchet man. Boo how door. Is he dead? It's quiet. He's dead, the money box is gone, and Johnny Lee along with it. Lamont, who did 
you talk with at headquarters? Commissioner Weston. Oh, what does he think? That Johnny Lee killed that hatchet man and stole the money? Yes. What do you think, Lamont? I don't know what to think, Margot. I've known Johnny Lee a long time. It's hard for me to believe that he's a thief and a killer. Well, I've been mistaken about people before, and I may have been this time. What are you going to do? Try to find out the truth. I hope we can clear no, it. I mean, where are you going now? Oh, we're already there, Margot. Mm-hmm. We're going to this herb shop. Notice it's right next door to those offices where the hatchet man was killed? Yes, I did, just this moment. It's run by a Chinese named Sin Fu. He told the police a pretty fishy story. Go ahead, Margot. Thanks. Hello? Yes? Well, hello, Alfie. What? Go oh, blimey, what? It's Mr. Cranston. What are you doing here? Well, I work here, Mr. Cranston. Thought you were in jail. I got out two months ago. I'm on parole. Better behave yourself, then. Margo, I want you to meet Mr. Alfie Nemo. If you ever need a pocket picked or someone stabbed in the back, he's your man. No, I remember that. Where's Sin Fu, Alfie? You want Sin Fu, Mr. Cranston? Oh, hello, Sin Fu. Alfie, you will have to excuse us. Oh, that's all right. I got some cleaning up to do. And I've never been in a Chinese herb shop before, Lamont, and I'd like to look around. Go right ahead. Well, Sin Fu, I just dropped in to find out why you lied to the police. I lied to police? Not so. Honorable ancestors turn over in grace. Is that so? Come over here a moment, Sin Fu. Yes? Now, look out this window. Notice that window next door? That's the way the murderer escaped. Most astonishing, Mr. Cranston. You were here in your shop when that hatchet man was killed, Sin Fu. The police asked you if you noticed anything. You told them no. The wise man's answer. You must have heard the hatchet man's screams. It's hard to believe you wouldn't have glanced out this window to see what caused them. Sin Fu did. And why did you tell the police you didn't? It's better avoid trouble. That's the way to get in trouble. What did you see when you looked out this window, Sin Fu? Sin Fu see Johnny Lee escape. And toward rear. There's a very narrow passage. Yes, I know that passage. I also know he couldn't have escaped down it without either a ladder or an accomplice. He have accomplice. Me see him. It was. Yes? Excuse one moment, Mr. Cranston. Alfred! Uh, what's the matter, Mr. Sinfu? What do you do with this door? Why, oh, I, I was going to clean up in the back. You hear Sinfu say not to go in there? You told me never to go in there? Why, no, sir. We just. Oh! oh. Why, you. You slapped me, you did. <laughs> Improved memory. I tell you, never go in there. It's not so. Yes, sir. I, I guess you did. What's the trouble here, Sin Fu? Uh, nothing, Mr. Cranston. Only servants take training. Yes, yeah, quite a problem, I hear. But you were saying... Oh, yes. Uh, we speak of Lee's accomplice. Yes. Are you not careful of this, Mr. Cranston? I may understand you know and like him. He, Johnny Lee's uncle... Chung. Chung, the accomplice? I don't believe it. So tell, Mr. Cranston. I'm going to his place and find out if you're telling the truth. You think he'll tell you? I don't know. There are ways of checking, Sin Fu. Doesn't Chung answer? I don't know. Just a second. I'll try. But it's unlocked. Come on. Well, should we? We have to, darling. What's that? There's someone in that room there is speaking in Chinese. It sounds like a chant. The crazy fool! That's Chung. What's he doing? There's no time. I'll explain later. Chung! Open up! You hear me? Open this door. I'm not going to stop. Wait a second. Stand aside, Ellie. <laughs> Chung, <laughs> that bottle. <laughs> You, you should not have done that, Mr. Cranston. That was poison. Yes, it was poison. You meant to drink it. 
nephew, Johnny Lee, committed terrible crime, Mr. Cranston. My family lost much face. Better Chung should die. It'd be a great deal more to the point if you'd stay alive to answer some questions, Chung. I've just come from the herb shop of Sin Fu, and Sin Fu says... Sin Fu? Yes. Excuse please, Mr. Cranston. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To a room. There's something I forgot. Be back one moment. See that you are. What do you think, Lamont? Is Chung really going to take that poison because he'd lost face? Or because he feared exposure? It's hard to tell. Why should he have feared exposure unless he knew what Sin Fu was going to tell us? Wait a second. What's the matter? This isn't the daughter of Chung's room. What? Look over there. There's the back door and it's open. He didn't go to his room. He escaped. Of course. He cleared out just as soon as he could when he heard Sin Fu's name. But why? Maybe because he knew what Sin Fu told us. And if he knew... What, Lamont? You try to make sure that Sin Fu doesn't repeat it to the police, Margot. Come on, we're going back to Sin Fu's shop. <laughs> Sin Fu wouldn't come to the front door. I don't know. There was a light on for a moment, I'm almost sure. As long as he wouldn't, we'll have to force this rear door. Is it that important? Could be. Besides, it was obvious that Sin Fu didn't scold Alfie because he didn't want him entering the rear of the shop. It's because he didn't want us to see in there. Yeah. Hurry up, step inside. Oh, it's pitch black in here. One moment, I'll try and find a switch. Okay, here's one. Now, this is the rear room of Sin Fu's shop, Margo. wonder why he's... Oh! What's the matter? Good Lord. Good Lord. Are they bones, Lamont? I'm afraid so, Margo. Human bones? Looks like it. Boxes over there contained what these do, Margo. We're in the company of a couple of dozen skeletons. Lamont, let's get out of here. Not yet, you don't. Alfie! Get your hands up, both of you. You surprised me, Alfie. Oh, I meant to. Chum. Now listen. Wait a minute, what's that? No, what's please! That? Please! What? Chum. Go, Blimey, that's from the front of the shop. Oh, what is it? It sounded like Sin Fu, but let's find out, shall we? Oh! <laughs> oh, God, that was brutal. Everybody, it's me. Never let your guard down for anything, Alfie. Now pick yourself up and march inside. But don't you shoot me. But don't give me an excuse. The light's on, but no one's here. Where does that door go? Into an all elite outside. I'd open it. Oh, stop wagging that gun. I said open it. Well, by me, I am. I... The mark. Oh, Lord. It's... It's sinful. A knife in his throat. Chung stabbed him and propped him here. Watch out. Catch him, he's falling. Got... Come out the lights. Who turned out those lights? Just a second. I saw a switch over here near the front door. Where did I find it? Careful, Margot. There. Margot. Good grief, Lamont. What happened? Where's Alfie? It's the wrong question, Margot. Where's the corpse? <laughs> return to the shadow in just a moment. Friends, during the recent severe weather, homes, apartment houses, schools, and other public buildings heated with hard coal have enjoyed full, healthful, uninterrupted warmth. Regardless of snowstorms halting highway traffic or causing power failures, homes and other buildings heated with hard coal have been sure of continued heat. That's because in most instances, enough coal can be stored to carry you through the entire heating season. Yes, whenever you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you have the assurance of a warm and snug home at all times. Now, here's something else. Coal can be just about as convenient to burn as any other fuel. With a blue coal temp master on your furnace, all trips to the basement to adjust furnace dampers are eliminated. The temp master automatically adjusts them for you, keeping your home constantly at the healthful temperature you set on the upstairs dial. You'll be glad you heat with dependable hard coal when you discover how little attention your furnace requires with a Tempmaster automatic heat regulator. 
The Blue Coal Temp Master can be installed on any furnace without interrupting the heat in your home. And a Temp Master will save you a lot of coal. Call the nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow and ask him to demonstrate the Temp Master in your home. Now, back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston has been investigating a theft and murder in Chinatown. His investigation twice led him to Sin Fu's herb shop, where, on his second visit, he encountered first the little ex-convict, Alfie Nemo, then Sin Fu's body. Immediately afterwards, however, both corpse and Alfie disappeared. And now, a few minutes later, in the alley back of the shop. Well, Alfie and Sin Fu's body have completely vanished, Margot. Let's go back in the shop. Lamont, how did they get out? Simply went down the hall and out the other door. I don't see how Alfie managed it. He the body on it. He didn't. He isn't strong enough to carry the body. I'd like to know who did manage it. I'd like to know the explanation for all these bones back here. Could... Could all these persons have been murdered? It's hard to tell what to think. Here's something odd, Martha. What's that? There's a skull on the work range here. You notice these steel boxes? Each seems to hold a complete skeleton. This skull seems almost to be a, an extra skull. What could that mean? I wonder. Margot, we've got to get this to police headquarters and see if they can identify it. But how? Check the dental work with Johnny Lee's dentist. Mark, you think this might be Johnny Lee's skull? I'm afraid so, Margot. Well, what are you going to do in the meantime? I'm going back and call on the Honorable Uncle Chung again, Margo. This time as the shadow. Well, it's about time you return, Chung. Huh? I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Who said that? Where are you? You cannot see me, Chung. I am the shadow. But what... I'll ask the questions, not you, Chung. A strong box has been stolen and a hatchet man killed. It is said your nephew, Johnny Lee, committed the crime and that you helped him. That's not true, Shadow. Where were you at the time it happened? Right here. Can you prove that? No, but... Why did you run away from Lamont Cranston? Where did you go? What did you do? And not tell anyone. You can tell the Shadow, Chung. Chung, not lawbreaker. But there was strong brother in trouble. I promised help him leave country secretly. Who was that Tong, brother? I cannot tell you. Talk, Chung. If you don't, you'll find yourself facing a murder charge. What? Where did you take this man? Where is he now? He... He... at the waterfront in shed near Pier 32. Waiting to be picked up and taken to a ship? Yes. What's his name? You ask Chung betray him? I'm ordering you to give me the evidence that may save your life. Talk, Chung. Talk. His name... Sin Fu. What? Chung say Sin Fu. You take the shadow for a fool, Chung. Sin Fu is the very man you murdered. Not true. Sin Fu was found with a knife in his throat. A knife you put there, Chung. Chung not kill Sin Fu. Did not... You had your chance at an alibi, Chung, but you've refused it. Shadow... Sin Fu is dead. And dead men give no alibis. <laughs> Wait, Shadow, come back. No understand, I... Elfie. Hello, Mr. Chung. What? What do you want, Doc? <laughs> Your company, Chung. There was some money stolen tonight, and you're going to show me where it is. Well, you were right, Lamont. The police had that skull examined by Johnny Lee's dentist. It was him. I was afraid of that. Well, Margot, it looks now as if Johnny Lee was innocent. Sin Fu must have killed both Johnny Lee and the hatchet man. Then took Lee's body away with him to make it look as if Johnny had absconded with the money. And then Sin Fu himself was killed by Chung. The funny part of all this, Margot. When the shadow talked to Chung, he claimed that Sin Fu was alive and at the waterfront. He couldn't be. We saw Sin Fu dead with, with a knife in his throat. I know we did. 
Yet somehow, Chung sounded sincere. Well, if you're beginning to doubt what we saw for ourselves, Lamont, take a look at your sleeve. There's something on it? Yes, yeah, a red spot. Blood. You must have got it when Sin Fu's body toppled over and you tried to catch it. Blood. Red spot. Marco, I've got it. What? Chung wasn't lying. Sin Fu isn't dead. Oh, darling, you're crazy. Am I, Marco? Well, if Sin Fu is alive, I know where he is. But I hold on, darling, because we're going there now and going there fast. Come on, Margo. You sure this is the place? It has to be. It's the only shed anywhere near Pier 32. Have you got the flashlight? Yes, right here. Okay. Here we are. Get behind me, Mark. Right. All right, the game's up, Sin Fu. I'll be... Sin Fu doesn't look very much alive to me, Lamont. Bring that flashlight a little closer. See something? Take a look, Margot. He was right after all. But he is dead. But look how he died. From a bullet through the heart. But he was stabbed through the throat. No. Sin Fu faked that. I knew he had when you pointed out this spot on my sleeve and mentioned that it was still red. Blood would have turned black. What? Oh, of course it would have. But then, why did he say it? Because he was skipping the country with the money. If we'd reported Sin Fu dead, no one would have suspected what really became of him. I see. But who killed him? The man who took his keys. What? Look there. See that belt loop? Mm -hmm. It's torn. That was where Sin Fu carried his keys. The murderer ripped them away. What does that tell us? Tells us that Sin Fu must have the money locked up somewhere. Margot, if we mean to catch Sin Fu's killer, we'd better find that money box before he does. Come on, let's start looking. You're sure you're taking me to the right place, Chunk? Yes. This year, 32, where Sin Fu left Trump before getting food. All right, then, get out. But watch yourself. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, yes. Here it is. Sin Fu's trunk hidden back of Pali. <laughs> now, open it up. But remember, one funny move and I'll put a bullet where it'll do you the most harm. And me the most good. <laughs> Margo? You found anything, Lamont? No, but look over there. What is it? Cars just pulled in beside the pier. Come on, we're going to investigate. Blimey, the money's got to be in that trunk, Jim. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, it's here. Uh, you see it? Yes. Still in box. Has not even been opened. <laughs> Sin Fu never even had time. <laughs> Just set it down, Chunk. Then walk up a couple of steps. What? What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you suppose? You going to kill Chunk? You think I'm going to leave your life to tell about this? <laughs> Back up. To the edge of the pier. Go on. Walk. Before, before you shoot, how you know money be here? What do you care? Where you're going, it won't matter whether you know or not. But... Keep going. Right to the edge. Then stop. Further. Further. That's it. Now. Listen, my friend, now. please... I'll just put a couple of holes in you so you'll sink faster. No, please. Get ready for your last swim, Chunk. Who's holding my arm? Hey, let go. <laughs> it is Shadow again. I'll kill him. Where is he? Where is he? You cannot kill what you can't see, Alfie. Now I'll take that gun. Let me go. Let me go. 
Now ah. oh, then, pick it up, Chung. Uh, I, I have it, Shadow. You ain't got nothing on me. You killed Sin Fu, Alfie. That gun is going to prove it. You're crazy. I don't even know where Sin Fu is. You're lying, Alfie. You know where Sin Fu is because you and he both escaped from his herb shop at the same time. Immediately after he faked his death and the lights went out. Why, what's that prove against me? You saw Sin Fu get into Chung's car. You followed. Saw Chung drive Sin Fu to that shed over there. When Chung left, you killed Sin Fu and took his keys. You came back to find the money with Chung's help. Uh, uh, try and prove it. The law will prove by that gun that you killed Sin Fu. Gun? And I think that Chung will testify you had the keys to this trunk when you came back. Blast you, let me go, Shadow! Take your hands off me! I shall, Alfie, I shall take my hands off you very soon and deliver you into those of the law. Something you still haven't told me. What all those bones were doing in the rear of Sin Fu's shop? They were there for a perfectly legitimate reason, Margot. Just the same, they gave Sin Fu the idea for his crime. What do you mean? Well, in addition to being a shop owner, Sin Fu was also a bone polisher. A bone polisher? What on earth is that? Well, often Chinese who were buried in this country are exhumed and sent back to China for reburial. In that case, their bones are polished and put in little steel caskets like those we saw in the rear of Sin Fu's shop. Well, then when Sin Fu killed Johnny Lee, he thought he'd never be questioned about the bones because he was a bone polisher by trade. Exactly. There was one more thing, Lamont. Hmm? If Chung wasn't in on any of this, why was he helping Sin Fu to leave the country? Because he never realized that Sin Fu had anything to do with the robbery or the murders. Remember, Sin Fu made all the arrangements before he committed his crime. Chung saw no connection. Sin Fu was clever. Clever? Well, maybe, Margot. Just the same to recoin an old saying. Wages of Sin Fu were death. Now let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority... John Barclay. Thank you, Andre Baruch, and good evening, friends. As Andre told you, you can heat your home with dependable anthracite coal with ease and comfort by installing a Blue Coal Temp Master automatic heat regulator on your present furnace. A number of people have asked me if a furnace is fired differently when dampers are controlled by a Temp Master. The answer is no. You fire your furnace in the same way, except that you pay much less attention to it. In the morning, shake the grates gently and add a liberal supply of coal and do the same at night. There's no doubt about it, anthracite coal is the most dependable fuel for home heating. And when burned by modern methods, is just about as convenient as any other. The Blue Coal Temp Master assures you of modern, carefree heating comfort. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters' names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The shadow is presented by the DL and W Coal Company, distributors of blue coal. Lamont Cranston is played by Brett Morrison. Margot by Grace Matthews. Your announcer is Andre Barouche. Remember, it's blue coal for finest heating service. It's blue coal for finest modern equipment. It's blue coal for the best home heat. Money can buy.